it's Abigail, I think it's cheap. Hello, everyone. Can I have the three more? Okay, I will start. My name is Emil. The meaning of my name is hope. Yeah, that's a simple one. So each of us has a meaning of our names. I think in Arabic, we all do that. So I asked my dad once, why did you decide to call me Emil? And his answer was so romantic. He told me in 70s, he liked a song for, he liked a song for Um Kiltoum called Emil Hayati. How many of us know that song? Yeah. That's so romantic. The meaning of Emil Hayati is hope of my life. So my dad said that I was hope, I still love uh, hope of his life. I wish. <laughs> okay. So I think we all, I totally start believing Somehow, we all have a connection with our you names. Tell them about the names break. that we didn't choose, actually. Our okay. parents, and maybe their the friends sometimes, or anybody else. Maybe okay, the doctor, now. even, will choose and your name sometimes. We will do but, and going in life, After the we break, really you are doing to that who's name going in a first. certain way. And we might, actually, um, affect somebody with that mm -hmm. name. So let me tell you a story about me. I will put this picture for just one second. I will change it. And please don't take a photos. I told you not. <laughs> OK, this photo for me in grade 7. And that me with Bisht <laughs> and Musar. <laughs> yeah, it was my reaction, the same when I got this photo. I, who didn't know which I am, I'm not going to tell you. OK, so and I received this photo in a direct message on Instagram. A, f uh, a lady called Muna sent this photo to me. So I really laughed, and I was shocked. I asked her, Muna, from where did you get this photo? She said, I have to call you because there is a story behind this photo. We were in grade seven. We had in one of the Islamic uh, ceremonies and the teachers decided to have an event. Muna was part of that event. She came early morning, the day of the event, and she started uh, practicing with the teacher. But Muna was really nervous and she was shaking, exactly like me now. And uh, the teacher just was like, told Muna, you know, Muna, you're not ready. I don't think you have to go to this okay. event. Maybe next okay? time, yeah. when are you are ready, you can make it. I think you missed so Muna said in that second, when she said that, I just remember my mom, because I went home and I told mom, mom, I will be in a, an event at school. And she was so excited, decided to come to see me. So now what will happen? But in that second, I arrived and she said, the teacher told you that we're replacing Muna because Muna is not ready. She said, you told her, you disagree with her immediately, and you told her, don't worry, it, just because this is her first time, and I will practice with Muna until the time of the event, and we will make sure that all of us will be ready. And he, she said, you just grab me, and we did it. We were practicing, and we went to the event, and I did it. And that photo, taken by Muna's mom, and when I kept this photo for all these years, she said, I always, when I see this photo, I remember you. And I remember, and I tell, I tell myself, that day, I made my mom happy, just because Emil was there. And she said, yeah. She said that to me. She said in Arabic, Emil, inti kunti Emili. Hope, you was my hope. So, it's not like my name was something to this lady. So this is something I really like it, which Fatma told you about. It's called Auladna. Auladna is, which means our children. Auladna is a campaign I launched it in 2008 because the number of the car accidents for which really killed kids in Oman was high, but no one pay attention for it. People think using car seats is a luxury. We don't need it. The school buses are fine. Kids don't sit. We don't have to do anything related to that. But for me, it was totally a different. I wanted to do something. I start, I launch a campaign for that. I call it Auladna, which means our children. The main goals of Auladna, we have many. I will just speak about three of them quickly. The first one was, I call it the street football. Usually, early in 2010, 2011, we used to have a lot of green spots next to the road in Oman. And most of the summertime, 
kids go and play football on those areas. And what happens, usually they kick the ball and the ball would just be in the middle of the street and kids run to bring back their ball and play. Like nothing happened. And that was really risky. I saw that once in front of my eyes in my neighborhood. I know it, I have to do something. How, I, how I'm launching a campaign about road safety and I'm, I'm not thinking about those kids. So what I did, I went to the, one of the, uh, my uh, club, a football club in my neighbor. I spoke with them and I told them that just to occupy a small place for those kids from the street and they can come and play football there. They agreed, I, go, I went back to those kids, to their parents and we did it, ended. On those 10 Should kids, we go together to hide football them? inside the okay? football you're club, okay. not you're in the street like anymore. The year after that, I received What's a call from the manager of the club. He told me, guess what? Water? We're doing Do a summer water? camp for football for kids. And you are 10 kids who you, who you brought them last year already registered. And they will be playing football all the summer with many more kids. So that was a goal. And mission has completed. And now, and now you can notice that we have many, many football clubs, thanks, thank you, that really having a summer camp, especially for the kids. So that was one of the things. The other things, I received a call from the teachers telling me, please come talk to the kids in the schools about their behavior, especially the boys. So I was thinking, if I went to those schools and I start speaking to those kids, I will look similar to their teachers. They were not going to listen to me. They don't listen to their teachers when they speak to them about their behaviors. So no value will be added to that. So I thought about someone all kids will love, all kids will listen to him if he spoke to him. So the only person all kids in Oman love is Ali al <laughs> So I know everyone's love Ali. So I tried to contact Ali. At that time, Ali was in the UK playing, playing football with one of the teams in UK, I'm sorry, I'm not good in football. I don't know. <laughs> so, but Ali agreed, agreed to be part of Auladna. He told me, you have to send to me all the tips. So when I go with, with the school with you, I know what to talk with the kids about it. And we did it. Ali just arrived and we visit many schools. Actually, Ali was so excited. He told me, in every visit, inshallah, when I come to Oman, you have to schedule some, some meetings with those kids for me and I will be available. And we did it. A lot of school. I get a good feedback from the teachers telling me, kids waiting for Ali every year now <laughs> to continue the good behavior. Thanks to Ali. The last story I will tell you is about the car seats. In 2008, when we start talking about car seats, believe me, most of the educated parents don't think it's important to use it. They think it's luxury. Do you believe it? Car seat is a luxury. They say it's expensive. Our kids don't listen and something like that. So the team of Auladna, let me show you the team of Auladna. Ignore Um Khamas. Okay, how many of team Auladna is here? Show me your hands. Okay, thank you for supporting me here today. Okay, so team of Auladna, who looks very young in this photo, me too. Okay, uh, we decided to distribute free car seats to tell people it's easy. Take it, fix it in your car, save your kid's life. So we looked for many donations from banking sector, private sector, many other people who helped us, really helped us to give, to distribute free car seats. We went to hospitals waiting for mothers with newborn babies and give so them free car seats. So we go and hype them together? We helped the parents to fix what do you the, want us to the say? car seats. We went to schools and many other places just to distribute free, free car seats. And now in 2080, yeah. when I speak with someone and tell them, mm. do you use car seats? It's Most boring. of them say yes. because kind of education has been somewhere with the parents. So if you check this photo, you will notice most of the Auladna's members are young. How many? Why I had to, to bring all those young people? I was just thinking about one idea. One day I will stop doing work for Auladna. I will, I will just start, I don't think start we should any give them, but they know them already. So what I want from Auladna <laughs> Sustainability. I wanted the ideas we don't and the goals Zita's of Auladna to be sustainable, even but if there is no Auladna. Come. During the break, so when we'll I brought know. all those young and no, tried don't, my, don't my say best their names. to educate Why don't you them, say three, to teach them all the tips Shireen, and ask them to help me and be with me in every journey related to Auladna, I actually was thinking 
how to make the ideas of Auladna sustainable, how to make each of them responsible for his own safety, his family, his neighbor, and his friend. And I told him from day one, if you save one kid's life in whole your January and Auladna, it's mean our job has been done. Because one life is better. It's make a difference. One family, it's always make a difference. But surprisingly, my, my mission, my work, my goal, it was only in Oman. All the time you I was working in Oman. In Masqat, Salala, Masendam, all this area. I was surprised because I found myself uh, has been listed me, and nominated as one on of one, road two, safety three. champion what around the world. I don't... What do you think? No? That was nominated by the Global Partnership for Road Safety in Geneva. And after that, I've been invited to participate in the first road safety summit in Moscow. But if you ask me, as Emil, what is your real achievement in Obladna? It's this durable boy. I know, who can serve? This is Ali. He took my heart from day one. Okay, Ali's mom, Alia, is one of the co-founder and a member of Auladna. When Alia starts work, Alia, where are you? Okay, that's Alia. <laughs> okay. When Hi. Alia started you working just go in Auladna, the first time when I spoke with her and I told her, no, Alia, come, I want I don't you to think work we with should. me. She was a student. I feel you believe like that? She was so young. If we do, I don't full of just energy, takes, doing anything I, I ask her to go do. And hype she them, really honestly. stand up for everything. She visit, visit the schools with me, talk with everyone, and really teach people how to use car seats. Ask them so now Alia, the student, is a beautiful woman. Let me get a yes. And a, a very <laughs> professional, really. Okay. Very yeah. professional and a beautiful mom. So talking about I think about are you mom, inspired is shorter. Are you feeling inspired is longer. When you say, are you inspired This piece of art more done by catchy, my friend, I think. Ali Al-Farsi. Yeah. She called this piece, Me and My Mother. Speaking about mother, I want to tell you With a small three story international about me speakers. Early 80s, my mom decided to drive car. My mom wasn't working. And there's not a lot of places that she want to visit or to go. So I asked my mom, why do you want to drive? There's no places you want to go. You're not even going to work or anything. So my mom answered in that time, in 80s, is something, a lesson I will remember it for the rest of my life. Every time when I want to stand up for women and women empowerment, I remember my mom's word. My mom said, I'm driving today. So tomorrow, when you want to drive, no one can say no to you. Not your father, not your brothers, not even your husband. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that was my first lesson in women empowerment. Even at that time, I didn't understand what does that mean. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I finished my speech because they already told me to stop. <laughs> Um, my last word for you all is a few words that said by Jalal al-Din Rumi. He said, never lose hope, my heart. Miracles dwell in the invisible. Thank you very much.